Well, when you talk about Emba Mons, you talk about traveling to the village, uh, traveling to wherever your family is, traveling to where you haven't been for a very long time. That's the, uh, the um, attitude of a Nigerian. You travel to your place of origin when it is time for Christmas and other festivities. Reason being that at that time, almost everybody is traveling back. So you get to see your friends, you get to see your family members who maybe one thing or the other have taken out of that village so people like to travel in the east we have august meeting we have sorts all sorts of things happening in the south south and all that but now traveling seems to be a luxury that a lot of people cannot afford just two years ago uh, what used to be uh, airfare transportation to go by air from lagos to abuja or from uh, lagos to oweri for instance is now not even enough to take you by bus to your destination. And it is very worrisome. So we're looking at transport fares going up by almost three times in the last 12 months. And that's being very modest, saying just three times in the last 12 months. Because just imagine from Lagos to Calabar in two, two years ago used to be like uh, 21 to 25,000 Naira. Now to go to Calabar is from 30,000 upwards especially at this time it's about 35,000. So you can just imagine, by bus, that's what I'm saying now. But the other one was by air. So we don't know what is going on in the country. Well, Dr. Lawmefo maybe has uh, some answers for us. Dr. Lawmefo is a political analyst and he's joining us this morning. Doctor, good morning and welcome to the program. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for hosting me. Mm. I... Um, can hear you are lit litany of uh, lamentations. Yes. And yes. Um, that is uh, what uh, the economy has become. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, the situation we have found ourselves in it has been predictable it, uh, since uh, the unleashing of uh, the two uh, major headwinds on the economy. I call the headwinds because of... Uh, the tsunami impact they have had on the economy, the Naira flotation, and the, the unplanned uh, and the uh, unregulated re removal of uh, first subsidy. The, the, that's just the truth. And um, what has uh, impacted the most on uh, on uh, uh, transportation costs is a fuel uh, subsidy removal. Uh, because if you recall, uh, December 2022, we were buying a fuel at uh, 197 uh, naira uh, per liter. And now uh, you can't get it anywhere for less than the, the, the 620. You know, in, the, in Abuja here, I bought uh, 660 um, and uh, consistently 640. So you can see. And uh, here is the Abuja. Where you, if you move to, if you move further north, it's uh, even a uh, much uh, more uh, the same. And um, it, it's, it's the fuel, the cost of fuel. So the trans, the transporters cannot help it. They just have to adjust the the, the price of uh, the, the transport fare to enable them. Uh, be able to buy fuel uh, at uh, the prevailing price and then uh, be able to uh, have something to show for uh, the journey. You know, so that, that's, that's where we are. And uh, for me, uh, for me, essentially, we, we need to um, uh, pay attention to what we advised the government much earlier. We told the government, you cannot remove fuel subsidy without uh, putting test certain things in place. And um, seven to eight months uh, down the line, nothing has been put on ground by government. Uh, you know, they, um, a little they did, uh, they called the palliatives, um, they, they gave some state uh, governments uh, some money to do this and do that. And that, that is uh, not what will uh, cushion the effect. Um, you know, like you rightly pointed out, Nigerians would want to travel for Christmas. It has been um, a, a standing tourism, a, a internal a tourism arrangement that Nigerians have made for themselves. You know, um, internal in the sense that 
whether we like it or not, they, 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 they Nigerians say they want to travel. There are reasons. Everybody plans to travel. Muslims and Christians, it's not even a Christian celebration alone. You know, other faiths join it because it offers a beautiful time to connect with the uh, loved ones who are scattered all over. Uh, some uh, some families, you know, significant number of families have their members outside Nigeria, and they all uh, walk uh, towards the coming home to catch up again, review uh, what they have done in the year gone by, and then uh, take some important uh, family decisions. Uh, know who they, do what you may call a, a cost uh, uh, stock taking. They take stock. Uh, see members of the family that needed to be uh, supported, see certain uh, naughty family issues that uh, needed to be resolved. There are certain things you cannot resolve until people really come together. Mm. And then uh, December is just it. Everybody walks towards December. So, you know, you, you can see that um, there is no measure in place to really mitigate the impact. If I had expected that uh, even uh, um, some state uh, gov governments ought to have uh, tried to use the, uh, uh, you know, do some kind of uh, intervention to um, help uh, transporters that uh, will be bringing people to their state uh, cut down on the cost. But for you to do that, you need to offset, you have to uh, provide uh, some money for uh, these uh, transporters. Because uh, the, 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 the charge, they are, um, uh, bringing on now, it is mostly uh, justified, and even though those are, you know some of them also hike, it, it is the trend actually every Christmas they top up. Look at it, look at the FA now. If you if you can go online to go to one hour travel, um, particularly from Lagos from Abuja to the eastern part, the return ticket is about half a million now. You know, half a million, 500,000 return ticket. Mm. If you want to move from Lagos to anywhere in the East, move to Lagos, move to Abuja from anywhere in the East, or move from Abuja to Lagos and vice versa. The cost is as high as 250,000 one way. So if you double it, uh, you know, you do, you do the math. You see that we are talking about half a million. You know, for me, Particularly the FA, I don't think it is justified. You know, the way they have hiked uh, theirs beyond the, uh, uh, you know, should I say three times over, it's more than three times over what it used to be. Uh, um, you know, initially we were struggling between 75,000 to 1,000 Naira, uh, 100,000 Naira for a uh, one hour uh, flight. But now, from that 100,000, we are now talking about the 250,000. I think uh, it's, it's too high. It's really too high. And uh, I believe that uh, the aviation uh, sector uh, ought to have uh, actually, you know, waded into this. I really don't know why, um, you know, um, people are allowed to profiteer in the economy. I believe there should be a law that uh, will uh, be able to uh, stay in uh, the gap for the for the masses. Uh, you, you, go, you have uh, what you call a uh, uh, consumer regulatory agency here. You know, what is their job? Can't they really negotiate on behalf of, uh, of, of, of Nigerians? I want to believe that that is why that agency, that agency is put in place by government. You know, pricing should not be arbitrary. It's very wrong. It's not done anywhere, you know, and it's because government has not really played the, its role. Government has not been able to stand there for the masses. That is why you have government. You have government because there should be law and order. So why should people be allowed to profiteer from the misery of, the, of, the, of Nigerians? Because that is what I call it. They are worsening the misery. And because they know most Nigerians are under pressure to travel, even those who do not want to travel they have, have very serious reasons why they must travel. So the, 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 the entire service they have 
will go into into um into into transportation when they get there the, the celebration will not be as many as it ought to be and then you also add this there is also a, a bigger a bigger problem of them um, you know beyond the government not standing in the gap for the people there is a bigger problem of a of a collusion we see here and because um, when government agencies that ought to uh, regulate you know their, their their job is regulation and they fail to regulate you will see collusion in the mix you will see that they are actually uh, 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 you know uh, colluding with uh, these uh, service uh, providers and they leaving the the, the the masses nigeria their citizens worse off so I, I i blame the government here look at the highways there is no palliative measure because uh, when you say you can't travel by air then the alternative is to travel by road mm. where are the highways you know the highways uh, most of them are impassable most of them around the country you know so if, even security is not there so people are are condemned to uh, travel by road, a journey that would take uh, perhaps five hours will take uh, 10, 12, 15 hours. That's, that's, that's the situation now, because the roads are bad, and you are doing so, you are traveling by road, also uh, uh, looking at uh, the, the, the insecurity, uh, kidnappers, and the, all that, that, uh, that uh, uh, await uh, uh, road uh, users in Nigeria. So even from government intervening in the area of uh, ensuring that there is fair pricing, you don't have that. Security on our highways, you don't have that. The roads are not maintained. You, you know, you don't need to reconstruct the roads uh, at uh, moments like this, but you can make them passable. You know, they fill the potholes. Just fill, simply fill the potholes. You know, you don't need to reconstruct immediately, you know, but fill the potholes so that the roads will be fairly motorable, but it's not done. So what is Nigerian government actually offering Nigerians? I don't see anything. Because the reason why you have government, two things, is for security of their lives and, their, uh, and, and property. And of course, for the welfare of the people. So security is lacking. You know, welfare of the people is lacking. So what is the justification for government in Nigeria? That's the question that is begging for answer. And then nobody is coming up uh, to tell us uh, whether we really have any reason to have a, to say that we have a government. Because they are not uh, on top of their game. They are not uh, living up to the expectations of Nigerians. And well, then Nigerians are, are not happy with uh, the situation at all. I, I do not know whether some of these agencies agencies need to be scrapped or something, because if you have mentioned that there are agencies that are responsible and they're not working, what is the need spending money on them? Uh, even when we're talking about regulation, in some other climes, in some other countries, even housing is being regulated, you know, rent, when you're renting a house, there are some laws that are put in place. But in, in Nigeria, a landlord can wake up tomorrow morning and tell you that he has upped the rent for, uh, three, by 300% or more and tell you that if you don't want, you can get out. And it gives you maybe one month notice and that's the end of it. Nobody does anything about it. So we're just left here. That's, Do you? That, that's my point. Precisely my point. You know, you have government to regulate our lives. That is why, you see, ordinarily there, there will be no government. Why you have government is to ensure law and order, is to ensure fairness, is to ensure security, is to ensure, you know, what you may call fair deal for the weaker segments of the society. There are people that can take care of themselves. There are billionaires and billionaires who don't care if, if you like one hour one flight in Nigeria, let it be one million naira, they will fly. If you go to the airport, they'll be falling over themselves. But that is not a, a normal society. In a normal society, government will be there to ensure fairness, and fair, ensure fairness. And we have we have the statutory organizations, bodies, agencies. Nigeria doesn't like laws. Nigeria doesn't like agencies. 
what you lack is committed patriots, professionals that will run these agencies. Rather than run the agencies to regulate and ensure a better society, they appropriate the platforms for their personal gain. That's what you get. So when you find when you find the um, the service providers behaving anyhow, anyhow you know they like, is because those who should regulate them are colluding with them. That is where this whole nonsense is coming from. If you go to, I talked about a consumer uh, regulatory agency. You know, the consumer regulatory agency is the one particularly uh, empowered by law. Is a statutory agency that should stand in the gap for the people where it comes to pricing, you know, delivery in, 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 of goods and services. It even it things like Standard Organization of Nigeria, NAFDAQ, and so on and so forth. Their job is not pricing. Theirs is to ensure that um, what you may call integrity of uh, the of the of the goods, of uh, the services and stuff. But to ensure fair pricing is consumer protection agency, and they don't do this. You can't find any. In fact, you you can't even tell who who is their, 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 their DJ. Nobody knows him or her. Nobody knows whether he's a man or a woman because they're practically not there. They're not doing anything. At moments like this, they ought to wait into what has happened in the aviation. Organize the private uh, 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 trans transporters. They ought to be negotiating with them to understand what should be fair pricing. Uh, well, uh, federal government federal government has promised us palliative in the form of buses. They even said it at COP28 Where that they're going the to give... Where are the buses? They, they are going to give, sometimes in the future, 100 buses to Nigeria, to, to uh, 220 million people uh, to ply. 100 buses that are not even enough you know, for Lagos State will and, be given to Nigeria. That's it. So you can say that it's all... Government is simply not there. That's just the gospel truth. And this is not rocket science. It's not rocket science. And that is why I keep blaming NLC. In a, in a situation like this, NLC ought not to have allowed the government to remove subsidy without putting certain things on, on ground. But they allowed it. And you see, in, in, in Igbo land, we, we say that when you hold a strong man down, is the time to collect the machete. It's not where he stands up. If he stands up, you lose all the advantage. Because he's a strong man and he's also armed. Government is like that. And you allow government to remove subsidy, and you're not coming to call for strike and all that. You can see how ineffective the Judah J. NLC has become. It's because they did not insist on certain things when they should. And you know, you cannot say that uh, you are removing foreign subsidy when you have not done anything about the CNG uh, compliant buses. If you have uh, CNG compliant buses, it does have a few of them in Nigeria. You don't even have the places to convert, to convert the, the, your vehicle to a CNG. A few of them you have. You may have to spend as much as 500,000 naira to do that. Where does that leave the Nigerian buses? You know, so the, the worry some of us have is that what ought to be what ought to be the the the, um, the fair deal for Nigeria and the masses is to be guaranteed by government, and you know when you when you can't get government to do that because naturally uh, they, they, they they want to run a rough shoot over the people, trample on their rights. That is where you have organized labor come in, NLC. You don't have NLC. You don't have opposition political parties. You don't have even Nigerian students' uh, union. NANS. NANS has now become a government parastata. So you don't have Nigerian forces are simply not, not grouped, organized in any way to be able to even raise their voice. There's no platform left anywhere. Right. I remember when we were in the university in the, university in the, in the, in the late 80s and early 90s, NANS. National Association of Nigerian Students was very, very vibrant. We stood up to the military. And today, NANS is a government parastata. 
as we speak now, we have two presidents of NANS. The other day, I saw the other one driving a driving a, 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 a jeep, a student driving an SUV. You realize, no, he didn't purchase it. Who did? Whoever gave him that jeep will tell him what he should be doing as NANS president. So the whole thing has collapsed. It's a total mess we have found ourselves in. And I don't even know what to recommend anymore because, you know, like I said, you don't have opposition political parties that should be the ones even fighting and shouting. There is no PDP. There is no Labour. There is no, there is no, there is no opposition strong leaders. I think it's not one. OB is not one. You know, so you don't have, you really don't, you, we, we, we don't even have democracy. The situation wow. is so dire. The Nigerians, Nigerians are really, Nigerians are not just, uh, you know, uh, on the short end of the stick. They have, Nigerians are lost in the shuffles. They wow. are, they, you, you, you are forced to provide your house, your road, your school, your, your, your hospital. You are, you, you know, Nigerians are, are compared to construct roads. If you wow. go to my town in Anambra State, all the roads in my town, if you have if you have a, a, a 30 third roads in my town in Anambra State, 27 of them were constructed by, by indigenous of the town. Where is government in all this? Well, uh, well we do hope that <clears throat> we will eventually have that government. But uh, what you have mentioned about ask, not having democracy. Ask the right questions. Yes. Where do we go from here? What, we can't continue to speak. What no, you have do, mentioned about democracy between. should be a topic that uh, we should still uh, be look, we should start looking at very seriously to define what kind of democracy we have in Nigeria and what kind of democracy we need in Nigeria. But unfortunately, this is uh, where we have to draw the curtain for today. Doctor, thank you so much for being a thank part you. of the program. Thank you. Yeah. Like I said, let the agencies sit up. Yeah. They, particularly, the, the consumer regulatory agency must wait in and ensure fair pricing for Nigerians. That is why they are set up. They should do their job of this crap. Thank you. It's simple. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Okay, we've been talking with Dr. Lome for political analyst, and we were looking at the fact that the prices of uh, the transport fares have gone up at least 300%, and that is a very worrisome thing. Uh, if you travel to somewhere and you want to come back after the end of the year to meet your family, then you cannot do that anymore. Even when you're staying within Lagos, and if you have, for instance, you're staying in a Ogba, and you have um, a fiancé who is in Badagri. That's a very distant relationship, and it, it might even end that relationship because of the situation that is happening right now. Moving from one point to the other has become a problem. Well, maybe that's why people are resorting to bicycles. If you come to the island here, you find a lot of people riding bicycles. At least, Lagos State Government has not banned motorcycles. But if uh, um, they had not banned bicycles, if motorcycles were still something that people could use at this time, I'm sure the road would have been littered with motorcycles and everybody trying to at least get a, a motorbike that will consume less fuel and can take you from place to place. But now, in Lagos State, no motorcycles are allowed, so people are resorting to bicycles. So uh, that's the situation we are in. If you cannot trek, uh, then you buy a bicycle. That's how we are right now, because you have to work, you have to put food on the, your table and all that. Well, well, let's take a short break, and when we return, we'll be looking at another very turning issue in our polity. Stay with us. <laughs>